is up YouTube, Alex from Mojave Repeater here. Um, if your radio has ever dropped its fill in the middle of a field exercise or op, and you basically didn't talk to anyone the whole entire time, go ahead and hit the like button and let me know about what happened down below in the comments section. Today I want to discuss a radio roadmap. In other words, what is the next step that a responsible armed citizen should take to improve their radio communications capabilities? and what direction they should seek to go with radio comms. Uh, the tactical industry right now is flooded with Baofeng radios and accessories. But there is a relatively low level of knowledge and information out there about radio topics. Uh, while the Baofeng is a great training aid, it's not a very durable or reliable radio. And coming from someone who has used uh, radios and communications in the military, a Baofeng is not something that I would trust my life to. The other thing that I see in the industry right now is a serious reluctance for users to spend good money on higher quality radios. Uh, and it makes no sense to me that the same users that would be embarrassed to go to a two-day rifle course with a cheap red anodized Air 15 are also plugging a set of $1,000 EarPro into a $30 radio. If you wouldn't trust your life to a cheap rifle, then why would you trust your life to a cheap radio? Um, now, that is no fault of the user, but I think that there are a lot of different ways you can approach comms and people are seeking the way forward, but don't know where to go. That is something that I intend to shed some light on in this video and hopefully lay out a course for people to improve their radio communications capabilities. Currently, you can break the radio world down into three containers. Um, on the left side, you have ham or amateur radio, no shade to this group, but they're generally considered the FUDs of the radio world. And generally in this category, you'll see people who enjoy using radio as a hobby uh, for doing radio checks, talking to their buddies about their equipment. Um, and it's a really great place to learn, but it lacks a lot of real world utility because it's constrained by a strict set of rules until an emergency strikes and then all the rules are out the window. Uh, the group here polices their own. This radio service is governed by the FCC Part 97 and requires at a minimum a technician class license. There is a small fee and a test to get licensed. In the middle container, we have the audience for this video, which I assume if you're watching this, that you are a tactical civilian or survivalist and interested in preparedness. These are the people who seek to employ communications for a purpose, whether it is small team tactics, training, or emergency scenarios, these users are trying to use their comms to enable them to do something. And on the right, we have our law enforcement, EMS, fire, rescue, military, or other public safety agencies. Comms are deeply ingrained in what these people do, and it enables them to accomplish their mission. This is what we as tactical civilians seek to emulate for our own equipment and training. To add some detail to this roadmap, we can break our container down into three progressive levels or tiers. The entry level, the intermediate, and the professional. We're going to define each of these tiers and discuss both frequency selection or the frequencies available to us in one column here, and the equipment. In the entry level, we usually see a user with just one handheld radio. The entry level shares a lot of its equipment from the ham radio world. And right now, most of the tactical industry resides in the entry level category. It draws a lot of influence from the ham world. So you will see a lot of users who are familiar with ham radio recommending certain types of equipment, um, which kind of bleeds over into this category. And you will see users with a lot of repurposed ham equipment trying to do tactical things. Thus, the equipment in this category is generally defined by extremely cheap analog hand, uh, portables or handheld transceivers, such as Baofeng radios. Usually a person in this category will have one handheld radio and maybe a push to talk and ear pro, and that is generally about it for radio equipment. Generally, a person in this category will spend under $100 on their radio. As far as frequencies are concerned, our users in this category have the personal radio services available to them, which are governed by FCC Part 95. This includes the FRS, MERS, and GMRS channels. 
These are generally license free except for GMRS which can be licensed for a small fee and no test. In this category, all of the radio services are limited to analog communications with no encryption. If you're watching this video, I know that your intent is to take the next step and to get out of this category. So where do we go from here? The intermediate level shares some influence from the commercial world of comms. Users in this level are asking the right questions about their comm setup, such as how do I use more power legally or how do I use encryption, which tends to lead them here. This is where we start to see users employing both digital conventional modes alongside analog communications. There are a number of digital standards, but I think the lowest barrier to entry resides with DMR. This is a, there is a very robust community around the DMR standard within the ham radio world. One of the important aspects of the intermediate level is that this is for the user that's ready to dive in a little bit deeper but doesn't want to break the bank, so affordability is key in equipment selection. With affordability comes a compromise to utilize radios that are past their end of life or secondhand equipment, but that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as you can find somebody that can refurbish or maintain that equipment. On the low end of this tier, you can get an Anytone D878 handheld radio, which is about $200. It's dual band, VHF, UHF, uh, digital, DMR capable, and you can do AES-256 encryption. If durability is what you're after, the EF Johnson 5100 radio is tough as a brick and supports P25 digital comms and encryption for about $250 on the secondhand market. The middle of the road in this tier is the Motorola XPR7550, which you can get for less than $500 on eBay. It uses the Moto Turbo standard, which is Motorola's implementation of DMR, and can communicate with certain DMR radios. Near the top end of this category includes radios like the Hytera PD682i, which is a durable and water-resistant DMR radio with AES-256 encryption for less than $1,000. Uh, for the sake of transparency, I do sell these radios online. The Motorola XTS 5000 is another radio at the high end of this category, which is an absolute workhorse. I've used these a bunch of times in the military, and I absolutely love them. My friend at BSH Comms on Instagram refurbishes, resells, and programs these for around $500. I'll leave his link below down in the description. Users in this tier may also be after some more power for their radios or communications in their trucks, which is where we start to see mobile radios introduced. Two solid options for digital mobile radios are the Hytera MD782i and the Motorola XTL 2500. For frequency selection in this category, uh, of course we still have the personal radio services available to us for analog comms, as long as we're using the proper part accepted radio. Although Users who are going into digital comms and encryption who want to do something like DMR might want to look at FCC Part 90 licensed frequencies, such as the itinerant frequencies. These are easy to obtain, and a person who owns a small business, sole proprietorship, uh, is a freelancer or contractor, is eligible to obtain these frequencies per FCC Part 90.35. On itinerant frequencies, we can use any digital standards such as DMR, Moto Turbo, P25, Nexten or others, and we can legally use encryption. The professional tier is heavily influenced by what the military, law enforcement, and public safety is doing for good reason. There's no need for me to pitch or sell you on this tier because people are out there actively operating with this equipment because their life depends on it. If they trust the gear, then you should too, and as a responsible, tactical, armed citizen, you should seek to emulate what the pros do, just like you would with your rifle setup. There's no way around it, if you're looking to get into this tier, you're going to spend money. I'm talking about $1,000 to $2,500 for a handheld radio. On the low end of this tier, you're looking at radios like the Hytera PD782i and PD982i for DMR, um, and the 982i can act as its own repeater. These two are priced around $1,000. Generally, people in this category are moving towards the P25 Phase 2 standard. Some well-priced radios that do P25 are the EF Johnson Viking VP600 for about $1,000, which at Anarcho Bacon sells and programs on Instagram. His link will be down below in the description. High-end all-band radios in this category are your Motorola APX6, 7, or 8000 line and the SRX2200, which are police and military radios. 
Um, additionally, Harris, Harris makes the Unity Public Safety Series like the XG100P. These are radios that you're going to have to get secondhand on eBay that will run you about $2,500 each. Um, additionally, people in this tier are pushing the envelope of what it means to be prepared with a robust communications plan. They're implementing mobile radios in their trucks, fixed base stations at a central or permanent location, GPS tracking, dispatching, uh, ATAC on their phones, portable repeaters, mesh networking, satellite phones, etc. Some great mesh networking tools which can enable ATAC uh, via an end user device like an Android phone are the Gotenna Pro X, which is less than $1,000, or the Wave Relay MPU5. Satellite or Iridium phones bridge a gap in coverage where we may have no cell service and are out of range of other radio comms. You can get an Iridium phone for a couple hundred bucks plus the cost of a monthly subscription. In terms of frequencies available in the professional tier, you have access to everything in the intermediate and the entry level tiers, um, but more established businesses and, and groups, those sorts of things, may be able to work with a frequency coordinator uh, to get access to higher power levels on certain frequencies that need to be coordinated um, you know, as when they're licensed by the FCC. Finally, the most important aspect of this tier of individual and what separates the pros from the amateurs is the training. It's simply not enough to buy nice equipment or get licensed for a frequency. Users in this tier are actively seeking to better themselves through training because at the end of the day, you are the weapon. You don't have to have pro tier equipment to get after this training either. If somebody puts any radio in your hands, whether you need to reach out externally or establish private internal comms, you are going to be a liability unless you get the training to know what to do with it. Courses are cropping up in this industry for comm training, like the ones that we offer at Mojave Repeater, so the training is out there. Go and learn and make yourself an asset. Now that pretty much wraps up the radio roadmap for tactical civilians. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment down below. If you did not enjoy this video, then hit the thumbs down button and you'll probably never see me again on YouTube. If you have any questions, I'm very responsive to DMs on Instagram at mojave.repeater. Uh, and let me know what you want to see covered in the next video.